I would love to bolt the solar panels on here right now because I'm just so excited to do it. But before I do, I thought better safe than sorry and I'm going to ground the system first. <laughs> So I have this old grounding rod kit uh, and I've been hauling it around for years and this is a good application for it. So uh, these are two rods, they're each three feet long. I used to have a third rod, I can't find it anymore though. I'm going to clean up the ends and this is a brass splice uh, to couple the two together and then it has a bolt uh, to pound them in so it's a, it's a nice little kit. Here's my parts with the ends all cleaned up and the bolt and splice and acorn nut. And the other end, I did not clean up this one just because that's where I'm going to pound it into the ground. I'm in the back of the array right in the middle between the two halves. Down here is where the conduit from the uh, electrical trench is coming out. I have not yet extended that, but that is going to go to the combiner box. And so I'm going to drive the grounding rods right next to it so that it's a quick, easy connection. I've read that it's better to have the grounding rod out here at the array instead of at the building. Um, I'm not sure what the reason for that is, but that's just what I've read, so I'm going to try it. Now as far as choosing a location, I just want it right next to the combiner box so that it's a nice, quick, easy connection. Uh, and I don't want to have it way out here where the wires have to run out because I'm going to be you know, if, if I want to walk back here and stuff, I don't want to trip over it. So I'm going to place it inside the array perimeter just so that it's a little bit more protected. To protect these threads, I'm going to put this, this brass coupler on here. And I want to make sure that I uh, protect all the threads all the way down. So if, if this hangs up anywhere, uh, don't, don't just say that's good enough because you'll wind up bending the threads. Uh, take the brass off and uh, fix whatever is wrong. So now that that's on there all the way, now the end of this copper rod is halfway in the middle and as you can see the steel bolt is longer than halfway. You want to drive this in so the end of the steel bolt is actually making contact with the copper or excuse me copper coated rod. It's actually a steel rod just with a copper coating on the outside. So make sure you, you run this all the way in and you're not relying on the threads alone. When I was younger I used to just hold it and whack away but inevitably wind up missing and hit my hand. So to protect against that just grab yourself a board and drill a hole in it and then you can um, you're not putting a lot of heavy force on here. See if I if I go and I press real hard wind up bending the rod you only need a little bit just to hold it steady so that you can hit the end of that. But now this keeps your hand away from the rod and you can pound it in. And you can use the same trick um, on all types of posts. All right, once you got that down there, then we can take off this uh, bolt here. Run the next piece in. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now unfortunately I don't have any more brass uh, splices. It's an old kit so I just have to whack the end of this with the sledge. Here's my grounding rod, and in order to ground the frames on either side of me, I'm going to use these little uh, 
coated copper lugs. And they have a, a stainless steel screw in them. Instead of placing them kind of on top, I was thinking I might end up kicking them or something as I walk. So I'm gonna put them on the side and I think they'll be a little bit more protected that way. Is that there's a little stainless steel uh, machine bolt with a star washer and a little nut with a star washer on it. Now I'm gonna tighten that up. So this is number six grounding wire. Loosen this screw up and maybe come in here like this. It kind of looks like a fun idea. Make sure I have plenty of slack. Put this in the ground and come up here. I'll chop it off right at this point. And I'll put this acorn nut on. Okay, and I'm gonna tighten this up. I grabbed extra because this piece is gonna go up to the combiner box. So I'm gonna to toss both in here. I don't know if there's any rules against having two wires under the same acorn nut, but I've seen licensed electricians do it, so I'm making an assumption it's okay. All my connections are nice and tight. I have about a six foot piece coming off that can go to the combiner box when I install that. Please let me know in the comments below if there's a better way to do this. I'm just uh, doing what I think uh, seems correct, uh, you know, and grounding the frame and uh, the solar panels are going to be grounded to the frame at their connection points, so I think this is okay. But uh, let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, I love it when you guys can share the videos. That really helps out a lot.